Uh, good morning or afternoon, whichever time of day or good evening you're watching this. But this will be an introduction to Math 1103, Chapter 1, a review of real numbers. But our first topic is Section 1.1, which will include tips for success in mathematics. It will also, some of these things have a uh, use in other courses as well. And uh, this is the textbook we're using, Beginning and Intermediate Algebra. And right there in the beginning, they're showing tips for success in mathematics. So you can read it from the textbook or you can watch what I'm doing here. Uh, topic one is getting ready for the course. Now your math course is going to be taught or given in a building, uh, North Campus it's called, and it was built particularly for what we call the math zone. In the math zone, there are uh, 60 or so computers set up at individual stations that you will be working at. And you will have an instructor who will monitor approximately 20 students. And there will be also student tutors uh, available. So. What you do is you come in, and since you are registered for the course, and there is a lab fee, uh, all of that is, in a sense, paid for. You come in, log in to MathZone, and uh, you usually do it through Blackboard. There is a bridge there that takes you to the site, and uh, your course will be there. Now, in this course, there is an online textbook. And that is a copy of this textbook. And I don't know if you've ever used an online textbook before, but all the pages are there. And you can make them bigger or smaller, or see one page and go back, etc. And then I'm suggesting, too, getting ready for the course is you're going to have some sort of notebook where you're going to keep your records of what you do, either from the homework study or from the actual execution of the practice and then later the quiz me's in a homework log. That would help to keep your work organized. More on that later. And we'll go over Math Zone in, in more detail, too. All right, so some general tips for success, not only in math, but in any course. Uh, when you do come in, it's a good idea to get to know other students. Now, in a regular class, if you're absent, you can call on another student and say, well, what did we do today? Or what did I miss? Or what should I have a heads up to? Stuff like that. Uh, you want to attend all classes. You never know what you're going to miss. And, uh, but again, by having a student there, uh, but again, you don't want to miss classes. You're paying a lot of money to go to school. Uh, attend all classes. Another general uh, thing for all courses, do the homework. And check your work. Uh, another thing that we might add is physical study. What's the difference between reading, let's say, a novel and a textbook? Well, a novel, you can you know, kind of read it pretty fast, and if you don't get everything, no big deal. But a textbook is slow, steady reading and rereading. Again, you want to master the skills. 
So you're checking your work and you're learning from mistakes because you'll make errors, but an error allows you to see where do I need some help? Where do I need to improve? And I'll cover this again a little later. Now, how do know how to get help? Well, again, every class you're in will have an instructor, and here in Math Zone, there is one instructor, professional teacher, for 20 students approximately. And there are tutors. And we also have a learning center in the bottom floor of the library on campus where in addition you can get help. And not only in math, they also, I believe, help in uh, English compositions and things like that. So you need to know that, not only for math zone, but for other courses. Again, try to be organized. The person who's organized usually gets things done. And time management is important here as well. How much time do you apply? When do you do it? Uh, ideally, you're going to read your lesson before you get to class. So that when you get to class, you are knowledgeable of what's going on. But as you read this, you realized there were areas you didn't know well, and you had a question. Ah, that's important. So when the teacher goes over that, and maybe goes over it too quickly, that's where you're going to ask a question. But you know because you've read the textbook before class. Now, when you are in class here at Math Zone, ask a question. They're going to be pretty much individual questions that you ask. The teacher will be there, the tutors will be available. Uh, ask those questions. Don't be afraid to do that. Remember, that's what the teacher is getting paid for. It's not just for him or her to tell you something, but to help you master this. And as Larry the Cable Guy says, get her done, get her done. So get it done in a timely way. Try to stay up to date. Falling behind in the math class or any class can be dangerous to your being successful in that class. Topic three, using the math zone. Well, again, we talked about it up here. You sign on, your course comes up, and then over on the right, there's a series of menu bars. I'm sorry, on the left, a series of menu bars. And the menu bar you're particularly interested in is the study plan. Some of the other menu bars are homework and uh, grading and... Uh, there's one called Multimedia. Let me go over that one for a moment. In the Multimedia bar, you can click on that. And then what, is, what the book has support of is videos for each section that you'll be studying. Animations, PowerPoint, and of course the textbook. So going to multi Multimedia will give you access to all of these. Now, getting back to study plan, what this does is it leads you directly to the first lesson you have to accomplish. And what happens when you click on it? Well, that first lesson will open up, and what it will do is show you practice examples of that particular first lesson. Uh, for instance, uh, in some of the courses they have questions on, even on this study plan uh, of success in math. 
Then they would have questions on the next section, which will be 1.2, and we'll be having a video on that as well. So, again, once you get into it, you'll see that. Now, you do the practice, and let's say you do example one. And it's probably pretty easy, and you put an answer in, then a little pop-up will say correct. Or if by chance you have the answer incorrect, a pop-up will say not correct, and it might give you a hint of where to go. And you look back at the answer and say, oh, it's supposed to be a plus instead of a minus, or I put a dot instead of a, com a comma, something like that. So you get a second chance to correct your answer. Check it again. It's still wrong. Then you have one more chance to change it, and then the third time it'll give you the correct answer. But you still don't know how to do it. Well then over on the right now, you do have some tutorial bars that one of them is help me solve this problem. Solve this problem. Here you have to input material. They'll say, well, what is 2 plus 2? You have to put in 4. If you click on the second bar, it tells you solve this problem. It'll say 2 plus 2 is 4. It'll tell you that. And then it takes you down to the next step and completely goes through without any input from you. In this one, you do input. This is a little bit more picking stuff from you to help you get to the answer. Then this is a place where you can also see a very short video, not in every case, but in some cases, or even an animation. And it'll also lead you to the textbook pages of that particular example. So lots of study. These are all tutorial items that help you practice and get correct answers. Now, when you feel confident that you've practiced enough and have mastered these skills, you then go on to a section called Quiz Me, where you're going to get uh, four to five questions, sometimes just two, sometimes three. And they will be, and often, the same examples as the practice. But now, you get to put all of the answers in for all five questions and then see how you do. And if you have them all right, or only one wrong out of the five, that is you have 80% or better mastery, you then go on to the next topic. And that how, that's how it works. And as you do these quiz me's, you get what is called mastery points. Now, mastery points are an important part of our math zone progress because by a certain date, if you have, or earlier, if you have 100% of your mastery points, now remember, you didn't have to get 100% on every quiz. 80% will give you 100% mastery you then are eligible to take your first test on chapter one. And that's what happens. You take that first test once you have 100% mastery. And I believe we've covered this part. We'll put the next few points up. Going on, uh, in topic four, they talk about, again, getting help. So important. And the way we've set up Math Zone is that the instructor is available right there. There are going to be student tutors available. You can get help right there. But, again, on the bottom floor of the library, there is a help center. So get the help that you need. Don't wait. 
and that is for other subjects as well. Now a little reviewing here for preparing for tests and exams. Well, what do you do? Well, hopefully you've taken notes in your homework log. Uh, you may have used some sort of color code to highlight those you needed help with at the time and where you may have to go back and look at again. That's what you do in this review in preparing for a test. You study. Study is good. Uh, one of the things, maybe not so much for this fundamental course that you're taking, but later courses, is that you form a study group where you have a group of students that are of similar minded uh, desire to get things done that meet. And the library has places for this, or in your dorms, where you get together and go over the things. This person may know that better, and by their explaining it to you, it helps them, and it helps you as well. So the formation of a study group might be useful. But again, the homework log, the records, organized, neatly kept records, is definitely a very good study aid. Uh, formulas. Uh, a technique that I recall years ago was to take a little index card and put the formula there. Uh, y equals mx plus b. And have the formulas that you need to know eventually on this index card. Keep them in your pocket before lunch when you're standing in line somewhere. You take these index cards out and you look at them. And it won't be too long before you start to master these formulas. I know I have a kind of a bad memory myself, so I've used techniques like this before. And then through repetition. Uh, and our last topic here is managing your time. Now, You've heard of college credit. Well, college credit for a course is usually three college credits for a course, or four in some cases if they have lab. And the general rule for every hour of credit assigned to a course, the rule is there is two hours of study outside the course the actual course time in math zone, one hour per course credit. So a three credit course requires six hours of study outside of the course. So you might say, how many courses are you taking? How much time should I spend studying for those courses? Now there might be one that you could cut the corners a little bit, but in a difficult subject, and for some of you, math is difficult, cutting corners is not a good idea. So managing your time. In fact, even in our textbook, they suggest you make a chart where you say, here's Monday through Saturday. What am I going to do? You're going to put your classes in here and then organize. Most people think they don't have to do this and, <laughs> and if you're successful then that's great. If you're not successful uh, then you may have to do something about managing your time so you can get the needed study done. And then also, don't forget this part, you need to put uh, relaxation in there as well because you need to go to the gym, you need to talk to friends, go out on a date, and live a life. But again, you're paying, you and your parents are paying a lot of money to go to school, so you want to give it your best shot. 
Okay, so this will wind up our tips for success in math. We're going to go on to topic uh, 1.2, which is a study of uh, continuing our study of real numbers. And up here I'll be putting the pages, although I didn't change them for this, uh, that's what that's for up there.